How do you do, my gorgeous friends on the internet? Today we're gonna do a speed speed run of the Svelte docs for fun. I don't know. I thought it would be a cool idea. Like, um, I held a Twitter poll recently, and I asked you guys, "Oh, let's just cover like a framework and go through it and see kind of how it compares to React." And you know, like, because it's a totally different paradigm, right? Uh, so I thought it would be fun if we just head in and explore and kind of see the differences and maybe make a series out of it. Who knows? Maybe we'll do quick next. Solid next. Uh, maybe we can live stream it as well. Who knows? Let me know down in the comments. We'll do another one of these if it gets, let's say, a thousand, a thousand likes. If it gets a thousand likes, I'll do a Svelte kit version of it, and then whatever you guys want to. Why is this open? <laughs> Sorry, I haven't had my nap. Okay, so let's give it a go, shall we? All right. So I'm just gonna switch over to VS Code because this is quite hard to read and I cannot zoom in. Rich, fix this. I need a way to make this font bigger. Okay, so let's start with our first component, the Svelte. Ooh, this is exciting. Okay, so in Svelte, an application is composed from one or more components. A component is a reusable self-contained block of code. All right, so if you've done any other frameworks before and know how components are, basically you have all your logic and your markup in this one component that can be potentially reusable in different parts of your application or customizable and to tailor your own needs as well. There's loads of things you can do with components. Uh, but the way React defines components, for example, is completely a different paradigm to how Svelte defines its components, right? So, uh, right, then and, and React, you'd have to do like a, I can export function, function default, whatever, counter, right? And then you'd have this. There we go. You'd have this and you return some JSX here, right? Like, that. cool. Uh, whereas, so it's like all JavaScript here, whereas Svelte takes a different approach uh, where it's more focused on markup and HTML. So let's. It doesn't let me copy paste. Okay, so I just installed it with Vite here. We'll just do a hello Svelte and see. So it's just one component in the app. I deleted everything else and that should already work. So if we check that out, hello Svelte. Awesome. So we got our first component. Now we can add a, a script tag above if we want to run any, any JavaScript. And the nice thing here is that it is like just JavaScript. Uh, which is quite nice, actually, you know? You, the thing with React is that you'd have to, you know, create your packages on NPM specifically for it to work in, in React. Whereas here, since it's only JavaScript and the script tag, I could import packages that are not necessarily optimized for Svelte or anything, and I, I can just implement it in my own code. So that's really nice. I do like that. Um, okay, so we can define a variable here, which is kind of like a piece of state, right? This is kind of the equivalent of doing a use state in React. So let's just do like develop by add. If I'm wrong about anything, correct me, because again, I haven't touched this in years, but we'll try to get through it. Uh, hopefully it'll be fine. Okay, so we have a name. So if we want to use this name in our markup here, we can just do name like that. Cool. Have a look. Awesome. And then let's see what it says here. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so yeah, we can just do normal JavaScript in these curly brackets. So I can do two uppercase like that and hit save. And if we have a look, yay, it's all uppercased. Nice. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, this looks like it's, it's just the same as just adding the image source here. Yeah, I guess we could do it here quickly. So you can do source equals to src like that and boom done all right and we get the image back all right now if the name is equal here the prop name is equal to the source name here we could just get rid of it so you can simplify it like that boop, 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 boop. cool okay it just needs an alt attribute but that still works as you can see okay cool Whatever, we'll go next. Uh, looks like you can just do a CSS as well. Uh, so you just add your style. Let's try that style, right? And then you do H1. I haven't done 
<laughs> Fuck me, I haven't done CSS in years. Oh, Tailwind just changed our lives, didn't it? Okay, let's do a little color of light blue. Nice. Okay, cool. So that works. And just so you know, I think I read somewhere that it's scoped. Yeah, so it says it's scoped, which means that if I make another component um, and I have a H1 in there, it's not going to affect that H1. All right, so it's going to keep it separate. It's going to scope it to only this file. So that's nice. Lovely. Let's keep going. Okay, so what is this about? Okay, so how do we import another component? Because we don't want to write all of our code in one single file. Um, yeah, so we can just make, let's go in the lib here. Let's make a new file. We'll call this pointer.svelte or something. I don't know. We'll add a h1 here, pointer, like that. Cool. So the way we import it, yeah, pretty much the same as you do in React. You do import pointer from pointer. All right, cool. Nice. Let's move that to the top. OK, let's have a look. Oh, we need to also render it out here. So let's just do that. We'll do pointer. Beep, 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 boop. Save. OK, let's have a look. And there we go. As, and as you can see, since this is a H1 as well, this is a H1. It doesn't mean that it's going to affect it. Awesome. All right. So that's how you can do that. Let's have a look at what else we can do. All right. Okay. So strings are inserted as plain text, meaning that characters like uh, the smaller than and the bigger than sign have no special meaning, which is great because that kind of stops you from doing any cross-site scripting. So you kind of just go here and uh, what would I use? Yeah, let's change this develop I add here. I'll get rid of the two uppercase here. We'll just keep name. And here we'll do hello there. Button, little button. There we go. Tee hee. Save. All right, so if you add something like that, it'll still just render it out as a string. But you could use this uh, HTML. Uh, that's it's just going to render out the HTML for you like that. But again, I don't think they, yeah, it's like, it's, it's your own risk pretty much. If you want to do this, so just be wary of that. Let's finally look at reactivity because that's, that's kind of a big portion of how, uh, we create these applications, right? So, um, so the syntax is going to be a tad bit different here rather than doing on click like you do in react. So you'd go down here. Let me just show you quickly. So let's say like you have a div you can do it on here. Actually, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Okay. So you do like on click, right? And then you'd run like a function here, uh, here we're using this syntax on click like that. All right, cool. And then we just, it looks like we're just passing in the increment and our increment function is literally just count plus equals to one. So that's how you can update your state. So yeah, let's, let's recreate that counter pretty much here. So let's counter equals to set the default to zero like that. Okay. So we just add let counter up here and I'll just make another, let's go down here. Uh, again, look, it's just literally JavaScript. So function call this increment. Cool. And this is going to just take counter plus equals to one. It's that simple. And here we can pass in a reference to that function. And that's that. And now uh, this is erroring out because that doesn't exist, but we can do increase my counter. Con count. You didn't see that. Um, counter. Yeah. Cool. Does that work? Boop, 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 boop. It works. Awesome. What's the squiggly? Visible non interactive elements with an on click event must be accompanied by key up or key down. Yeah. Okay. Cool. That's fine. Uh, but yeah, look at that. Super simple, isn't it? Let's, let's make a better example here. We'll just add two buttons button and we'll just duplicate that increment and then deceased. Oh, decrement, decrement. Okay, cool. So 
Yeah, let's just remove that. We'll just keep H1 here with counter like that. What am I doing here? H1, counter, awesome. And then we'll just add an on, what is it, click. We'll do increments, and then we can just make a new one here on decre decrement, on <laughs> click, jeez. Is it decrim? That sounds weird to be in my head. We'll keep decrement. You know, we don't even need this. I mean, we could just do on click, right? We could still run an arrow function in here and we can do counter plus equals to one. That should be fine, right? Yeah, it is. Cool. So I'll just run that. But again, you can define your functions up there as well. Counter minus equals to one save awesome d2 super super easy nice okay so let's take a look at this so svelte automatically updates the dom where your component state changes so basically every time you click on increment here or decrement uh this component's i believe it's just gonna be fully re-rendered uh okay uh oftentimes there's parts of your state that needs to be computed. All right, so basically you might have something like let like counter x2, right? Or double counter like that, which is going to be derived from this original piece of state here. Uh, so you'd be doing something like that, right? So let's see if that works. We'll do uh, h1 and we'll do double counter double save let's hit save and i believe if we increase as you can see that's not gonna work so what you need to do is add this dollar sign which might look a bit strange but i mean that's still valid javascript um in front of of double here like that okay so let's just convert that and say dollar sign and we'll do doubled equals to so we'll just do counter times two for example and hit save all right, let's replace that with doubled like that. Let's have a look. And yeah, look at that. So that's cool. So this is going to react basically to any changes when counter gets updated. So if counter turns into 11. This is going to rerun and it's going to update accordingly. All right. Cool. That's nice. I like that. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay. Looks like that's that's about it here. Let's go. Let's keep going. We're not limited to declaring reactive values. We can also run arbitrary statements reactively. For example, we can log the value of count whenever it changes. Ooh, that's cool. See, that's really cool. So it's kind of like a see. It looks like you can just do an if if statement as well. So you can do count is bigger than ten, then you can alert something. Oh, it's like a cool cool version of use effect. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. So we'll go here. So it means that we can not only just do it like that, right? We could also do like, yeah, I can run like a function here, right? That should be valid as well. I can do console log. Do I need brackets or anything? Let's see. Oh yeah, okay. It looks like I need brackets. My bad. Console log counter. Let's see if that works. Let's pop this sucker open. Doop, doop, doop. Lovely. Yeah, it does work. Uh, let's try an if statement as well. So we can do if, let's say counter is bigger than 10. And then we can just do an alert. A big boy like that. Let's see. That is cool. That is really cool. You have to admit. They're doing right stuff over there in, in Svelte. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. Okay, let's keep on going. Okay, let's have a look at reactivity when it comes to arrays and objects. So it basically says that, so with Svelte, the reactivity is triggered by assignments. So if you do something like array.push, uh, that's not gonna work. So let's just start this from scratch here. I'll just make a script. I'll do like a to-dos, right? Uh, Okay, and then we'll do Twitter. Okay, cool. 
that's it all right so we have a list of to do's all right so if we do something like let's create a function here function add to do right this is going to take in a parameter here let's do a to do there we go and then to do is the push and then here we can push in the new to do like that all right so this is uh kind of what they say here so if i go down here we'll do a what's it called oh let's try out the reactivity as well so we can do dollar sign right and i'll just do a console log of console log of to do's like that does that work that should be fine cool okay h1 will say we don't need a h1 actually let's just do a button and i'll do add a new to do cool i don't have an input yet let's just just push in a random value here Woo, like that cool okay on click like that set that equal to and we'll add the reference add to do okay cool let's see let's head over here so array we have tree fantastic if we click again click 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 no new to do's get added all right so this is not going to work unless you do something like this where you say numbers equals to numbers or in this case we'll do to do's equals to to do's right Oh, it's, uh, yeah, I have a const here, so that's why it's stopping me. Can turn it into let and do that. And then let's see, boop, four, five. Okay, so that would work. Uh, alternatively, what you can do is just do a spread op operator, right? If This is probably more common if you've done React before. So we could just take the to-dos and set that equal to and we'll spread everything that is in the to do's and then we can just pop in a new value like that right and then you can pretty much apply your splice your push all of those uh just using this right so let's have a look now ba, 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 ba. cool so it works the same way that's fantastic okay so let's have a look at the clearing prop so basically in in my app here, right? I want to pass down something to the pointer here, right? We have this pointer tracker. Cool. Oops. I think pointer. Pointer, like that. Safe. Nice. Okay, let's get rid of it. Let's say I want to track the mouse position of that pointer. So I could go here and say x equals to, let's say the default is going to be 0, and then we'll pass down a y as well of 0, like that. Cool. So what you do is you head over to the pointer and we'll add a script tag here. And it looks like you need to add this export let. Uh, that's a bit strange, but let's give it a go. Export let, and then yeah, we'll just call x and y. x and export let y, like that. So that should make it available in this component right here. Okay, let's give it a go. Cool, cool. So yeah, we'll do a P tag here and we'll do the mouse position is at, and then we'll do X, X, Y, Y. Oops, like that, cool, save. Let's see, does that work? Yeah, at zero, zero, cool, so that works. Nice. Okay, so that's how you do props. You can also do default values if you just pass in, yeah, you can just pass in some data and that's gonna be the default value in case no values get passed down. So I can say export let y, uh, x, this by default is gonna be set at zero and that's gonna be set at zero. So in case I have another pointer here and I don't define any of these variables of these props, then look, we still get the same. So that's cool. Okay, so we can just get rid of that and we'll keep that like that. Cool. And I guess since we are I guess we don't need to pass anything down here. Then we can just get rid of the export. I guess that is quite nice. I do like the 
because you can quickly glance, I guess, like if I look at this, I can be like, oh, okay, so these are props that are probably being passed in from pointer. But if I don't have these, then I know these are local, used only in this pointer file. Is that correct? Hopefully. I'm liking it though. That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, okay, it looks like we can spread props if you're familiar with React. Uh, just JavaScript, not even React. Why do I keep saying, oh, if you're familiar with React, just just learn JavaScript. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we can just spread the rest of the props. Cool. Ooh, if statements. All right. So this is where people are going to be like, oh, well, look at that. I don't like the syntax. It looks too funny. Okay. That that's so funny that you say that. Svelte syntax looks funny. What have you been doing in React for the past couple of years? Weird shite. That's what I'm telling you. Look, all of these frameworks have their own weird things associated to them. Okay, so you can't say we're not writing vanilla JavaScript here. Okay, we're making a function that exports JSX. That that is quite quite something. So. We need some sort of weird syntax in all of these frameworks, unfortunately. Uh, but yes, yeah, Svelte's approach is using this syntax here. So we can do a, let's have a look here. Okay, so you do hashtag if, and then you do your count bigger than 10 or whatever, and then you close up that if statement like that. Okay, w why not? Let's give it a go. I don't have my counter anymore, but Let's just solve it and try it here. Click, 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 click. There we go. All right. So that works. That's fantastic. I do want to try it. Okay. So I'll under hashtag if like that. And do we have a, we don't have any data. Let's make one. Let counter equals to, let's do the default to zero. So I can say if counter is bigger than five, let's just do like if, like if you have a user, right? And let's say it's null right now, so it doesn't exist. So if, if user, right? Okay, and then you close it up down here like that, if, cool. So, if the user is null, then you can do something like, oh, please sign in and hit save. Let's see. Well, where is it? Oh, sorry. I need to do the opposite. But there's no user, right? Because it's null. Yeah, okay. So then you have the please sign in. Nice. Let's see else block. Okay, so for the else block, you add the colon here like that. Is that colon? Colon. So you do colon else like that. Yeah, and that's it. And then you can just do uh, welcome developed by Ed or something. Fire emoji, save. Cool. So please sign in, but we could also add like a sign in button, right? Sign in. And this could have like an on click on it, on click. When you click it, it all it's gonna do is it's gonna take that user and it's gonna set it to the opposite of it like that. Sign in, boop, signed in. And then you can do the same, I guess, for the button as well. Anyway, nice. Let's keep going. So you can do else if as well. All right, nice. Here we go. So again, I don't think this takes long to learn, to be honest. It's just a couple of syntaxes that you need to pick up. Once you have like even the if statement, right? Well, it kind of is the same. So you do each with a hashtag mark at the end as color, and then you close up the loop. Uh, oh, that's cool. That's pretty nice. I kind of want to do this myself, to be honest. Okay, we'll just skip through it because there's nothing too crazy or special here to know. Okay, let's see what else. By default, when you modify the value of each block, it will add or uh, and remove items at the end of the block and update any values that have changed. 
this might not be what you want it's easier to show uh why then to explain click the remove first thing button a few times and notice what happens it removes the first thing component but the last dom node then it updates the name okay so it's 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 one of those key issues right um we we need to pass an id associated to all the different elements in our array and that's going to further optimize like how Svelte is going to render these out rather than just re-rendering out the whole um, array for you, right? I'm guessing that's, that's what it is. So yeah, let, let, I mean, let's give it a go. Script. All right, and we can have const. Uh, yeah, users, send that equal to Bob, Joe. Why they keep making these mistakes? Um, Terry, that's my car's name. My wife's car's name. Latra we'll as well. Maxine. And then we'll add, develop by add. Just be. Just add. Okay, cool. So we have our user. So if we want to loop over this, we can do a each. And then we'll do users as user. Yeah. And then here you could pass in the like user.id, right? Which I mean we don't have, but I'm forced to make it that. Look what you made me do. I have to delete this name. Add. Okay, and then an ID. Um let's do crypto dot get random UUID. Cool. Okay, so let's have the comma here. We'll just dupe this twice. Beep up. Oops. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to copy. I wanted to paste, paste, paste. Okay. Wahoo. Kako. That's, that's what I'm going to name my child. Kako. Okay, cool. Is that... Um, Last of Us. Okay, save, cool. Okay, so we're looping over this sucker and then we need to close this up. I assume it's like that each. Yeah, okay, cool. And then here, yeah, you could just render out like a component. I'll just do a diff here. I won't make a new one for now. So user.id, that should be fine now. And then here we can just do h1 and say, yeah, user dot name like that. Ooh, TypeScript. Nice. Lovely. Save. Let's see. Add Last of Us Kako Waho. Nice. Okay, next up we have a wait. So how do you actually fetch stuff? So yeah, it looks like you do the same kind of blocks again. You do a wait, hashtag wait, and then you have your promise. And then you can display a message while that promise is expected to be um resolved so you can do waiting or whatever and then then once you get the actual result uh you can display it here and then if you can also catch an error like that and then you can display that i do like that syntax looks quite nice i do like that okay so let's see what we have here so it looks like we are importing that asynchronous function and it looks like it's just doing a fetch fetch somewhere right await fetch and then if res is, is okay, then return the value. And if it's not okay, then throw an error. Cool. And then here, so we're importing it. We're adding it to this promise here. And basically when we're clicking on this button, it's going to try to fetch it for us, right? Okay, so let's let's refactor the code then. So it's quite easy. We'll just do, so we'll wait, right? And then we'll await that promise that needs to be solved. Promise like that. And then here we'll do a P of data is coming in like that. And then down here, we'll get the value with dot then, and then we'll do um, result, right? Result. Nice. And then here, let me close the door really quickly. There we go. We'll do a P tag again. And then we'll do the number not the number, the date, the data is result like that. Okay. And then let's close this up. Await like that. Data's coming in and look at that 59. 
Let's also add the error catching here so we can do catch any errors. And if we do, we'll render out a P tag down here. And you can again add your styling and whatever to it. I'm just gonna do that really quickly. There we go, poof. Request failed. Yeah, that's nice, I love that. That's really cool. Okay, cool. Anything to worry about? The, only, the, the most recent promise is considered, meaning you don't need to worry about race conditions. Wow, awesome. If you know that your promise can reject, you can omit the catch. Okay. You can also omit the first block if you don't want to show anything until the promise resolves. So if you don't want to see this like data coming in, just, just get rid of it and then click and then it's just either going to fail or it's going to display the, the correct result for you. Okay, anyway. Um, oh, here we go, the pointer events. Okay, so we did on click on pointer move. Yeah, let's do this, why not? Do we have it? Yeah, look, we have our pointer here. So we have a let x, let y. Let's just do like one here. Let point uh, mouse position. We'll do x zero, y zero, and then we'll have to refactor this a wee bit here. So it's gonna be mouse position, mouse position dot x, and then mouse position dot y. Okay, I'll just add like a div here like that and I'll just copy that paste that and I'll just add a Wii style to it just to make it full screen so we can do position fixed oops I need to select something let's select that div we'll do position fixed oh my god I'm so slow at writing CSS this is just taking forever men height Let's just make this full screen width of 100%. And then I'll just do a left of zero, top of zero. Doesn't matter too much, just so I can have this full screened up. Cool. Okay, so we have this. And then let's just go on here and say on mm, pointer move. Cool. So on pointer move, what do we want to do? Well, we want to update the X and Y value here, right? Okay, where did that go then? Let's see why this code's not working. Blah, 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 blah. I know I added the, uh, is, is it like a Z index thing? Z index, just put a 10 there. Where are you at? Where you had an... Oh, am I not rendering this out? No, I'm not. <laughs> import. Don't scrape it. Import pointer. There we go. All right, let's pop this down here. We'll do it at the top here. There we go. Pointer like that. Nice. Okay. So... Yeah, let's go here. On pointer move then I wonder if I can just have the nice thing about uh and react I can just have the type automatically from this I wonder oh there we go okay we do have everything that we need nice um okay so mouse position right we'll set that equal to and we'll just pretty much there's no point of spreading anything here because we we're updating both the values right so yeah, mouse position equals to X and we'll do E dot, what is it, client? Is it the client X? Client X. And then we can do Y is E dot client Y. Nice, that's it safe. Okay, let's have a look, does that work? Yay, look at that. Super cool. Okay, so this is nice because it's like fully its own component and it doesn't rely on anything. And we can just import it and boom, we have a working Wii component that, that tracks the mouse movement. Okay, nice. Okay, we saw on click anyway and other stuff like that, so let's go. Oh, okay. See, you can do inline as well, which is what we did. 
fantastic. In some frameworks, you may see recommendations to avoid inline event handlers for performance reasons, particularly inside loops. That advice doesn't apply to Svelte. The compiler will always do the right thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter because the compiler at the end of the day is going to optimize and just going to spit out for you like a full on vanilla imperative JavaScript bundle for you. Um, the cool thing is, I do remember this, you can also add, uh, what are these called? Uh, you can alter the behavior modifiers, right, of, of these events. So if you want to stop like prevent default or, you know, event bubbling or propagation, or if you would just want to run it once, right, boop, you can add this here like that, all right? And there's a couple more, nice. Let's see, component events. Components can also dispatch events. To do so, they must create an event dispatcher. Okay, so let's see what this is. So we're importing this create event dispatcher in the inner component. Where is that? Oh, okay, here. So we just define a function that we dispatch. Uh, and oh, okay, I, I think I know what it means. Essentially, what it means is we have a function right in our app right here, which is going to just alert us something. But we want to run it from inside inner from here. So what we can do is basically call this dispatch here with a key, it looks like. So message, for example, right? Um, and once this key gets recognized by Svelte, it's just going to trigger that function for us. I think so. Let's see. Let's see. So let's go here right at the top and we'll do import create event dispatcher from where does that come from? Svelte, just Svelte. Okay, cool. So let's make a dispatch. So we'll just set that equal to that, right? Nothing needs to be passed down into it. Okay, so we're calling this patch and we're passing down this key of message and then kind of the data associated to it, right? Okay, I see what that means now. So basically, let me just recap this quickly. So we have a, a function, right, that we want to run uh, somewhere else. So in this case, in the inner component, right? So we define our function. That's perfectly fine. That's totally cool. And then in our inner, we can import this dispatch and dispatch, um, yeah, dispatch something with a key and then with a value. And then when we're clicking on the button, we're calling this dispatcher, right? So I'm gonna click say hello. It's gonna dispatch message. Now in our app, we can just call on message or on. Let's do alert, right? So you can do alert and then here you say on alert. So whenever our inner component dispatches an alert uh, with an alert key, make sure you run this handle message for us. So there we go. All right, that's cool. Okay, cool. Okay, let's keep going. We have more events. Uh, there we go, text inputs. This is quite, quite important to know. Uh, so Okay, so we have val so we have a variable here, right? Let name world. Cool. And then we are hard coding the value here, right? So the value should be world. Uh, cool. So if you try to change this, as you can see, you can. However, we're not getting any update here down below. So basically, what we need to do is. Um, is just bind this. So we'll add this bind prefix like that. And now when we type, look at that, it's all nicely hooked up. So it's just as simple as just adding a bind here. So you don't have to do like in, you know, React, you'd have to, uh, that's uh, equal to, and you can capture the event here like that. And then you have a set, set input, right? Over to, um, whatever was in the previous one, 
actually we can just set it to e like e target value right cool so you do something like that right whereas here you just bind it directly to the value like that which is nice because it's simple and clean okay and looks like yeah i mean you can do this with everything here right with sliders range okay let's see what it says so in the dom everything is a string uh that's unhelpful when you're de dealing with numeric inputs like numbers and ranges uh, as it means you have to remember to course input the value before using it but with bind as well takes care of it so you don't need to worry uh yeah, what kind of data you're dealing with here, if it's a string or if it's a number, because Velt is just going to magically do it for you. So, yeah, we could just literally bind everything to the value like that, I think. So let's see. Bind, 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 bind. Does that work? Yeah, look at that. That is super cool. All right, let's keep going. Um, Okay, so check boxes as well. Again, you can do bind. Uh, oh, instead of binding to input the value, you can just bind to input the checked. Okay, let's have a look at that. Where is our input? Here we go. So checked. Yeah, so you can just bind that. So let yes is by default going to be false. Uh, but since it's binded to the checked, it's going to... Look at that. Go from false to true to false to true. Nice. Okay, let's skip. We're not going to spend on these damn inputs uh, because it should be pretty much the same. Here we go. Life cycle methods. Okay, so let's see how they do it compared to, you know, the use effects that we all know and love. We love it, don't we? Okay. Um, let's see, let's see. Okay, so we have the on mount. Um, okay, so this looks like it only runs once when the component mounts. Cool. Oh, weird. So just doing a normal query selector here. That's strange. In a later exercise, we'll learn how to get an element reference without using... Yeah, I assume so that we're going to do some kind of ref pa passing a ref to an element and doing it that way but yeah it looks like it's just like an on mount and yeah your code is okay let's let's try it why not so basically i can go here and import uh on on mount oops oops i need to do it in the script tag that's weird import on mount from where is this coming from just felt on its own Let's see, it's Velt on its own. Okay, on mount. I assume this is gonna run like a callback function like that. Let's have a look again. Yeah, a callback function and that's it. So if I wanna do a, oops, console log users and hit save. All right, so initially when the component mounts, it's gonna run that for us. What did I do? No. I messed something up here with the imports. Cancel. Save, save. Oh gosh. Should be fine though. There we go. Cool. So there we go. So when the component initially mounts, we get that. Okay. So yeah, we added this unmount here. So this will only run once, right? When the component initially renders out. So if we make any changes to this, let's give that a go. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's do a... Let's go down here and say let's new user we'll just set an empty pair of strings like that we'll call a function as well and say function add user right set that equal to and we'll say if uh we'll do users we'll grab that array right so we'll spread everything there users and then we can have our new one name of uh, new username right like that, but then a new user, there we go, new user. And then we can add an ID, I'll just call crypto here dot 
random UUID. Okay, cool. Nice. Uh, so we add that and then we can just reset it, right? So use new user is equal to nothing again. Cool. Okay, nice. So we can just do this on an input somewhere. So let's do it here. Input type text. That's fine. It's going to be this value here of new user. And then we can just bind it to it like that. Is that correct? Hope so. And then we'll add a button as well. Let's add a button. And then we'll say add a new user. And this is going to have an on click. Cool. And then we'll just add the user. Okay, so quite simple, really simple. Okay, so let's see if that works. We boof, boof, boof. So as you can see, that doesn't run again now. So you just won't run only when our component initially gets rendered. Now, of course, this is going to jump back to four because when we refresh, we lose we lose that state that we just did here because it's not persisting anywhere. But yeah, it works, so that's cool. Okay, so next up we have the tick. What's a tick? You don't want to have a tick. Maybe in Svelte, but not in real life. The tick function is unlike any other lifecycle functions. It can, that you can call it any time basically, and not just when the component first initializes. It returns a promise that resolves as soon as any pending state changes have been applied to the DOM. Okay, so basically, yeah, you can run this yeah, anytime. So in this case, right, I can grab select and if I hit tab, boom, it's going to uppercase all of that. Uh, when you update component state in Svelte, it doesn't update the DOM immediately. Okay, so it does like a scheduling as well where it, um, what's it called? Uh, where it batches, right, the, all the changes that need to happen. So I assume like it waits for, like if there's a state change in another component that needs to be done, it does that and everything. And if there's like, and when we, actually run the stick, right? I assume it schedules another change. Uh, it probably waits for the other important ones to finish. And then once that's done, this is going to run. I hope I'm right on that. I'm, I'm not sh completely sure, but yeah. Okay. So it looks like you can run basically a side effect. Um, yeah, whenever. <laughs> so that's cool. Okay, writable stores. Let's see. Not all application states belong inside your application component hierarchy. Uh, so basically, right, you might have a component that has a state and that's perfectly fine, or you might have an app that has smaller components that you can pass the state down to via props, which is fine. But sometimes you have a, a structure that is um, quite nested. So you'd have to pass down props quite a bit from component to component to component until you get to the component that actually needs the data. So as a store or a state manager allows you to essentially um, kind of extract that and just have your, your state separate, and then you can inject that state into the components that actually need it. Does that make any sense? Hope so. Not all your application, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so as well, we do this with stores. A store is simple, simply an object with a subscribe method that allows interested parties to be notified when the store value changes. Okay, so let's have a look. So in our app here, we have a count, which is coming from the store.js. Okay, so the way you do it is you create a writable like that. So import writable from Svelte store. And in here, you export that. And you just add the value here. So if you want the default to be zero to zero, if you do five, that's going to be the default. And then we're importing it here, which is fine. Um, and then let's see what's happening. Okay. So we can call this subscribe, uh, that allows our component to basically be notified when the value changes. Uh, and it looks like what, what we're doing here is we're just assigning this count value to the value from, um, from the store. So here we are just displaying it and now let's see in decrement and increment. Okay. So in the increment and decrement here, we're just modifying it, right? So let's see how we can do that. So we can run this update. It looks like, so I can run count dot update. 
Okay, so I'm guessing this n here is going to be like the previous value that we had, so we can call m plus 1, which should increment it. Yes, correct. Uh, let me console log out the value here, console log value. Assume this is the value that's coming from the actual store, right? Is it? Do I have a Wii console here? Can I not see any updates here? Well, that's a bit annoying. Well, let's do dollar sign, right? Dollar sign, console log count value. Okay, cool. Come on, man. Why is the terminal not giving it to me? Anyway. Let me have a look here. Oh, geez. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but I assume we're just getting the value, right? We're subscribing uh, to this value, which is going to keep track of any changes. Uh, so when it changes, we're just updating this piece of state, right? Okay, hopefully. Anyway, plus, 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 that works. So we can do the same with the decrement as well. So we can do count the update again, and we'll get access to n and minus one, right? Does that work? Do, do, do. Cool, cool. And then for reset, we can we can do set as well. And that just like hard sets it. Zero. Cool. Reset. Boom. Oh, I'm loving this. This is good stuff. Okay. Auto subscriptions. In the previous example, uh, works, but there's a subtle bug. The store is subscribed to but never unsubscribed. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. If the component was instantiated and destroyed many times, so you can imagine like we're navigating over to another page and then going back to this component, leaving, going back to this component. We're essentially, uh, yeah, we're never destroying that subscription, uh, which can lead to, yeah, not good things to be honest. Uh, you know how like in use effect you can like set a timer or like a set a timeout and then if i go to another component that set timeout is still running in the background uh which sucks because you you don't even need it that component doesn't even exist so you're gonna have memory leaks uh so in the use effect at the end you can run a um a return function and then in there you can unsubscribe from it uh but here we can just do you just like add unsubscribe oh okay cool okay con okay so you you add it to a variable like that right so rather than doing count subscribe like that we'll set it equal to why won't you let me copy paste that's not illegal it is not illegal you son of a gun come on come on let me copy paste there we go okay cool okay so you assign it to like an unsubscribe right so this should still be fine but what we can do here is we can import this on destroy from Svelte. I assume it's, yeah, okay, like that. So let's copy paste that in. Cool, there we go. And then on destroy, so when this component gets destroyed, we can get rid of this store subscription that we have there. Lovely, nice. Okay. No, oh, what is this? It starts to get a bit boilerplate-y, boiler though you haven't seen React, my friend. Um, especially if your component subscribes to multiple stores. Fine, okay, fair enough. If if you have multiple stores, this can be a bit funny and it's gonna look a bit, yeah. I, I see what he means. Uh, so, okay, so you can just prefix this dollar sign and then it's, it's just gonna hide that magic for you. Oh, okay, cool. Well, why didn't we do this from the beginning? Okay, so you don't even need any of these then. You can just do dollar sign count, the basically uh, the thing that's coming in from the store, right? So then you don't need to do any of these subscriptions and unsubscriptions anymore. So if we head over, so we define our writable and then here we just import it and literally just say count and that's it. Damn, that's cool, okay. Uh, auto subscription only works with store valu valuables that are declared or imported at the top level scope of the component here. 
Okay, cool. You're now limited to using count inside the markup. Either you can use it anywhere in the script as well. Nice. Okay, I love that. Um, now all stores are writable by whoever has a reference to them. For example, you might have a store representing the mouse position or geolocation or time. Yeah, so you wouldn't want this to be uh, mutable, right? Oh, okay, so that's cool. You can just add this readable here on top. Uh, import readable from Svelte store. Nice. Okay, so you have a writable and a readable as well. Cool. That makes sense. That's clear. That's concise. Uh, okay, what else do we have here? Derived. You can create a store whose value is based on the value on one or more other stores. So kind of like uh, what we've seen at the beginning with the... What example did we use? Uh, let let me do a scratch. Keep forgetting the script tag still. So you have like let count, right? And that's zero. And then we saw that we could do like let double count. Uh, sorry. Like that, right? Doubled count times two. Okay, so we saw something like this. So you can basically do the same thing with uh, with stores as well. So you can use this derived here. So time, right, you pass time, and then you do dollar sign time, and then you can do your changes right here. So let's solve this and see how it looks like. Import, so let's look at our store. So we have a readable and derived. Uh, we define a const time here, which is we set as a readable, and it takes in two parameters here, which is gonna be a new date, um, which is going to be basically whenever this component rendered. All right, so the date then and a start as well. Oh, okay, so we just we're essentially tracking how how long it passed since the page has been opened. And that's a great example, actually, that you, you can do with this derived. So what are we doing here? We're returning a function stop that's just going to clear out the interval. We have a starting position, which does a new date. And then here we're exporting an elapsed, which is going to again take in derived time. And then here we're just dividing it by, sorry, we're doing time minus start to get the, uh, the duration of the page that has been open. Okay, cool. Oh, what did I click on? Okay, we can do custom stores as well. This kind of reminds me of, yeah, Zostand a little bit kind of has that same kind of look to it. I guess, yeah, Jotai as well, right? Um, okay. Yeah, nice. That, I, I love this. This looks fantastic. I think that's kind of the core of it. Let's see if we missed anything important. Oh, look at that. That's That's pretty much it. And we finished the whole basic section here. Let me know. Yeah, we can do the advanced and the Svelte kit for a next video if you want me to. I'd happily do it. This is fun. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of Svelte. Do you like it? Do you not? Drop a subscribe. And again, if this video gets like a thousand thumbs ups, likes, then we'll do more. Okay, awesome. Subscribe. Check out my courses as well. And get out of here. Go on, get!